With applications moving to the cloud at an ever-increasing rate, the growing complexity of application architectures makes observability exponentially more difficult. With the average infrastructure engineer looking at 26 unique AWS services, how do you best manage that environment? Distributed systems are changing the landscape of how you effectively monitor, troubleshoot, and secure your application. Today, I'm going to walk you through Sumo Logic's new AWS observability solution and root cause explorer to show how you can break down those data silos and drastically reduce the time it takes to identify and troubleshoot issues with your application. You're probably used to having to toggle between accounts and regions using dropdowns, making it hard to see everything you have running. Now you can seamlessly navigate through that data under one roof. Everything I'm going to show you today comes out of the box with this new offering. On the left, you can see a list of all of my AWS accounts with an alias I assigned. I can see the underlying regions my services are deployed in and all of my services listed as namespaces. I pre-selected the prod account, which presents me with this AWS account overview dashboard, giving me a 10,000 foot view of the health of my services within that account. I can see some high level CloudTrail data up top and metrics for each of my services below. If I click on one of the regions listed under my prod account, like US East 1, I'm presented with a refreshed AWS region overview dashboard specific to that region. Now I can take a look at one of the services running in this region like EC2. Here I can see an aggregation of all of my EC2 instances with some high level metrics that can help identify trends. If I wanna take a look at an EC2 instance that's running hot, I can hover over it to get a quick glimpse of that metric at my tooltip. When I select this hexagon, I'm presented with a list of related content. Because we tag each login metric source with metadata, including account, region, namespace, and entity, I'm able to pivot directly into my EC2 logs. I can also select the specific entity under Related Explorer to drill down to a dashboard for that specific instance instead of having to find it in my list to the left. From any of these entities on the left, I can also pivot to other dashboards. This is an EC2 metrics summary dashboard, but I can select the dashboards drop down at the top of the screen and shift my focus to memory specific metrics. Now let's pivot over to the Lambda namespace. When I select that service, I'm presented with an overview dashboard consisting of all of my Lambda functions in this region. Up top, I can see audit information like caller locations and the top services and IAM users using Lambda. I can also see performance information, including invocations, errors, and throttling events, with a comparison of those metrics during the same time window yesterday and one week ago for additional context. A bit further down, I can see the functions that take the longest to run, or the ones that consume the most memory, as well as successes and failures. In the successes and failure section, we can see over 7,800 errors in the last 24 hours, which is unusually high. Moving over to the top messages tab, I also notice 720 errors for the get billing info function with error messages indicating there's an issue with database authentication for invalid credentials. Looking at the successful versus failed request panel confirms that this function is consistently failing. I wanna filter down to just my get billing info function on this dashboard. So I'm gonna add it to the filter criteria at the top of the page. This field auto populates as I start typing it in. Now I can see the most frequent function operations specific to this Lambda function. I see here that there are a number of update function configuration events, which are probably causing the errors we're seeing. Let's take a look at our log search to see some additional details about the update events. Pivoting from the aggregates tab here to the messages tab, lets me look at the raw log messages. I'll start with this update function configuration message. I can click on the event name field in the field browser on the left, Select that particular event and see a filtered list. Here I can see that one of our developers, Mark Smith, has been making a number of changes to this function recently. Now I can reach out to Mark and have him roll this function back to the previous version to restore it. Next, I wanna show you the second piece of the solution, Root Cause Explorer. This new suite of tools can be leveraged to address the sliding scale of complexity as effectively as possible. Root Cause Explorer is designed to help troubleshoot issues in complex AWS environments and is an extension of the Explore tab. In this scenario, we had an incident that impacted some users around 6 p.m. yesterday evening. 
Opening my load balancer namespace, I can see in the 500 by load balancer panel that there was a significant spike in error messages to our end users. We regularly find that outages are more complex in nature, usually involve multiple services, and the root cause more easily identified by understanding relationships between those services. To get a more holistic view of my services in the US East 1 region, I'm going to navigate back up to the region level and pivot to the Events of Interest dashboard. Here, I can see a number of anomalous events in my time series data. To further investigate, I'm going to open this in Root Cause Explorer itself. Root Cause Explorer is designed to correlate and contextualize events of interest across your entire stack, making the complexity of distributed systems digestible. The x-axis towards the bottom displays my timeline. Generally, the earlier a spike started to occur, the more likely that service is going to be a part of the root cause. On the y-axis, I can see how significant the drift was from the norm. The higher the spike, the more significant the problem. Each bubble in this window is color-coded to help you identify the type of event. Typically, early indicators of a problem will be items like load or throughput, while trailing indicators are more severe items like latency and errors. I know my incident occurred around 6 p.m., so I'm going to highlight that section and look at some of those anomalies. Let's take a look at this DynamoDB bottleneck event to start. In my Submarine tab on the right, I can see that this metric drift of 1,018% above the norm lasted for 10 minutes. If I move over to the Metrics tab, I can see the specific metric that triggered this. In this case, it was the read throttle events. The light blue time series is showing me today's activity, while the green and darker blue time series are showing that same metric one day ago and seven days ago. This is a key part of identifying an event of interest. EOIs are identified by understanding the severity of the drift and the stability and seasonality of that metric. For example, if you consistently see that your load increases noticeably every Monday morning, that reoccurring activity wouldn't be of interest. Similarly, if a metric flaps up and down at a regular interval, subsequent spikes likely aren't of concern either. Next, I'll take a look at the event that appeared after this DynamoDB event, which is a bottleneck issue on my hosts. When I select this event, I can see a 735% drift for 20 minutes. I also see that this single event is actually a grouping of similar CPU load average one minute metrics from four EC2 instances under the same ELB target group. One of the most powerful aspects of Root Cause Explorer is the ability to cluster related metrics and entities together. Grouping can also be done for similar metrics on the same instance, like network in and network out, as well as causally related metrics where one spike may have caused a different spike elsewhere. Understanding this topology of connectedness in cloud-based environments is the most critical element in identifying root cause. Next, when I select this error-related event of interest that followed my other two events, I can see the drift in 500 error codes on the ELB identified by the target group that the EC2 instances were grouped by. As I mentioned, the earlier a drift was identified, the more likely it is that that service kicked things off. I'll circle back to this DynamoDB throughput issue and select the Related tab in the panel on the right. I'd like to see if I can identify any changes, so let's take a look at the Events dashboard. You'll notice that when the dashboard opens, it's pre-filtered to the time window that we were looking into in Root Cause Explorer and the specific problematic DynamoDB instance. At the bottom of this dashboard, I have a panel showing all of my table events. I see some update table events, so I'm going to open those up in my log search again and take a look. That same time window and entity context is once again carried over. Moving over to the Messages tab, I see a little bit further down that AndKit reduced the number of read capacity units to two. We already reprovisioned these read capacity units to five to resolve the issue, but if this was live, you could circle back to the Explore tab and watch services being restored in real time. Sumo Logic puts this data at your fingertips with the continuous intelligence platform for AWS observability.